Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Steve Churchin, and uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer and Chief Information Security Officer at Zypro. And with me today, I've got William Ferreira, who's our Solutions Delivery Specialist. Hey, William, are you? Uh, how are you doing today? Good, Steve. Thank you. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm William. I'll be showing off the functionality uh, behind Zygate Security One today in a live demo, trying to show you know the power and flexibility behind our integrity monitors, and hopefully, I'll be able to you know get that shown off today. Great. Thank you. So. Uh, yeah, today's session will cover file integrity monitoring uh, and our new modern innovative way that we're addressing this for nonstop. So thank you everybody again for joining us, taking time out of your way to, to discuss such an important topic, but a fundamental security requirement for, for you know, compliance and other security aspects. So a little bit about Zypro. We've been in the mission critical computing space since about 1983. We're headquartered in Simi Valley, California, that's just outside of Los Angeles, and the weather here uh, today is gorgeous. Um, we've got expertise in cybersecurity, compliance, and database management. Uh, we've got globally distributed sales and support offices all over the world. So in your time zone, in your region, uh, we'll be able to assist you with any questions, any concerns, any support issues, delivery issues. We've got a very strong partnership with HPE and recently formed some newer partnerships with SailPoint, who's the market leader in identity, identity access management solutions, and CyberArk, who's the market leader in privilege access management solutions. We'll talk about those integrations in a couple of minutes as well. And we're going to be focusing a little bit on our patented security intelligence technology with Security One. Uh, so we'll be talking about the file integrity monitoring uh, component of Security One, but a lot of our patented technology goes into uh, the power of, of file integrity monitoring. Slide on Zypro's global strategy. So what we're trying to do with Zypro is establish ourselves, not just your security vendor, but as your enterprise security partner. So with any questions, any concerns, any projects, any topics that you want to discuss, uh, when it comes to cybersecurity and risk management, we want to be a one-stop uh, one shop for that. So how we do that is making sure that we're, we're constantly innovating. We're constantly looking at what we can bring to our customer base that's new and cutting edge and innovative that's going to help them solve real-world challenges. One of the key tenets to that is focusing on modernization. We want to simplify business processes and modernize the user experience. You're gonna see that in today's demo when William starts talking about voluntary monitoring and the, the modern ways we're approaching the new type of security and risk management strategies. Uh, we're gonna see that, how that power is harnessed through Security One. And then we'll talk about our integrations with SailPoint and CyberArk and ServiceNow because we realize nonstop needs to be a more of an open platform and if we can find a way to help you leverage your existing enterprise investments in these enterprise solutions and allow nonstop to participate in those environments your investment is going to go a lot further and nonstop is going to be viewed as a much more open system and application platform some of the new partnerships that we've got set up, obviously, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE, our two of our products come distributed as part of the nonstop operating system. Uh, we've got our new relationships with CyberArk, SailPoint, and ServiceNow. And these are some other partnerships that we've got lower down the list that we're actively working on integrations for. Um, we've got RSA Secure ID, if you want to accomplish two-factor or multi-factor authentication for non-stops. And recently, we introduced that functionality for your applications as well. If you want to introduce multi-factor or two-factor authentication for your applications, come talk to us. We've got the integration for that now. Um, and the list just doesn't stop here. If you want to integrate non-stop or your applications with, a, with another technology in your ecosystem, come talk to us. If we're not actively working on something in the background, we're, we, it's probably something that, that we can help you out with. A little view of some of our solutions uh, that uh, are, are uh, distributed through HPE as part of the operating system right now. Um, Merged Audit, everybody has this. Uh, it's your single repository for all nonstop security data. Uh, a fundamental requirement for PCI DSS compliance, and it's your integration path to your enterprise SIM or your source solution. 
So if you need to get security data off nonstop and integrate it with your Splunk or your Elk or your QRadar or whatever endpoint you have for log management and uh, incident and event management, Merge Audit is the way to do it. Uh, similarly, we extend Safeguard's authentication capabilities with user authentication. This introduces enterprise single sign-on and multi-factor authentication for nonstop. So if you need to integrate your nonstop with Active Directory, or if you need to integrate with another SSO provider, um, a radius provider, you would be using XUA uh, to, to accomplish that. Plus, it gives you all types of authentication, granular authentication controls too. So it's the de facto standard for extending your, your authentication capabilities on nonstop. Zygate Access Control, uh, this is an add-on product that uh, will introduce privilege access management and keystroke logging, uh, as well as integrations with CyberArk and with ServiceNow. So if you want to introduce ServiceNow into your nonstop workflow, uh, XAC would be the way to do it. Compliance Scar has been around for a while. This is our point in time file integrity monitoring uh, that has existed in the market for quite a while. We've got uh, quite a large install base with XSW. And today's demo will show what the evolution of file integrity monitoring from what we did with Compliance Pro uh, and where that was to where Security One is going to be able to provide the new modern, enhanced, innovative user experience. On the database management side, uh, we've got SQL Express. This is your comprehensive database management tool for nonstop. Think about it as your Microsoft SQL Management Studio or um, Toad on your Oracle databases. This is your interface into managing databases. And we've got Mars available as well. This is your uh, automated reload system where you give, uh, where you don't have to have a user or an operator sitting in front of your, your terminal uh, watching your, your database reload. So you can load up some parameters, load up some arguments, give it some rules on how you want, it, how you want to automate your, your database reloads and let it do its thing. And you're going to see immediate improvements in your databases and your applications and make sure that they're working at an optimal level. Okay, that being said, let's jump into the meat of this. So what is file integrity monitoring? Why is it important? Essentially, it's change management. You want to be able to, uh, to detect any time something changes on your system. This could be a file, this could be an object, this could be a system configuration. If somebody goes in there and starts modifying system configurations to weaken the security on the system, you want to know about it. Uh, all of these can be in indicative of a cyber attack or user error, but you want to catch something like this as early in the process, and it's one of the simplest, most fundamental security components out there, is detecting change when something changes. Um, if it's, it's just like a car. If you see a problem with a car early enough and take it to the mechanic, they can identify the problem quickly and, and correct it, fix it, remediate what they have to do. Similarly to a cyber attack, if you can identify something uh, early in the process, it's going to be much more cost effective to remediate or mitigate that threat than it is if you wait later on. And one of the quickest ways to detect the, the traces of a cyber attack is through integrity monitoring. If you see a file introduced in your environment, for example, that could indicate somebody has dropped a malicious object on your system, you want to know about it. Not only you want to know about it, you want to know who did it, when it was done, where it was done, how it was done. And we'll talk about in a, in a few minutes how we get all of that visibility through Security One. File integrity monitoring, as I said, is a security fundamental. Uh, it's going to require you to detect malicious attacks very, very early in the attack cycle. It's a critical input to more complex and, and more um, comprehensive types of analytics required for security intelligence later on as well. So without file integrity monitoring, you'll be missing a big piece of the picture. This is one of the very, very first things when, when people ask me, how do I address my, my cyber risk? Or how do I, how do I, where do I get started in protecting my environment? One of the first things you have to put in there is file integrity monitoring. It's a very also a very key component to help you identify human error. It can help you detect mistakes because before they become something larger. So if somebody fat fingered a key uh, a command and you'd had a, a 
an unexpected result because of it, you're going to see that in your file integrity monitor because you're going to see either a file change that you weren't expecting to change or a configuration uh, modified that you weren't expecting, but you'll get an alert and you'll be able to address that very, very quickly. It's a fundamental component necessary for compliance. Almost every uh, regulatory compliance framework talks about some sort of change management or file integrity monitoring. PCI DSS is the most, uh, the most, uh, uh, it's the most important one or the one that gets, gets the most publicity because of the nature of the data it deals with. But we're seeing this in GDPR, we see this in SOX, in HIPAA, in uh, a lot of the NIST frameworks, and a lot of components all hinge on change management and integrity monitoring. It's also recommended by the HP Hardening Guide. There's several places where the HP Hardening Guide for nonstop references file integrity monitoring and why it's important. So going back to PCI DSS compliance, it's impossible to achieve compliance without integrity monitoring. And I just pulled out a few excerpts from some of the requirements and sub requirements, and you can see it's referenced in there multiple times is to be able to, to have file integrity monitoring in place to detect changes with your software, detect changes with your log files, detect changes with your system configuration. And we'll talk about, and we'll see in a demo, those top five use cases where file integrity monitoring is the most critical. It also addresses quite a bit of challenges. So you've got to really get a, an understanding of what the challenges are before you just put a tool in there, configure it and let it do its thing because you might be dealing with more than you asked for. So one of the things that, that I always try and highlight is a file integrity monitoring tool or util, a solution needs to address these types of challenges. You've got to have flexibility where you're not drowning in alerts, where you're not getting an alert every time a file is read, every time a file is touched, every time a file is copied, because that might be business as usual activity. What you really want to do is detect changes that are not business as usual, that are anomalies, because that's where your effort needs to go to understand why that happened. But if it's a file that's constantly being read and it's expected behavior, you don't want to generate an alert every time that happens, because if that happens, all of a sudden you're going to get 800 alerts that are going to look all the same and people go um, people go alert now you know you'll you'll click on the first one go to the bottom click on the last one shift delete the whole thing and you don't know if the one in the middle was the really important one you need to pay pay attention to uh, compliance is always uh, up until now has been a very manual effort uh, lack of policy enforcement makes this very a time consuming process so You've got to make sure that the integrity monitoring tool you're using can address your compliance challenges as well. Understand what type of frameworks that you're targeting, understand the policies that you have in there, uh, not just highlighting that a policy was violated, but even having the ability to enforce policy. Uh, snapshot and point in time. In today's world, that's no longer sustainable, where uh, some of these frameworks <clears throat> Uh, tell, say that you've got to, or dictate that you've got to monitor on a weekly or monthly basis, that's not good enough anymore. We've got to get uh, integrity monitoring down to a real time or near real time le level because we know, I mean, the attackers know, they, they know that when your intervals are of when you're checking your, your integrity of your system, they can just sneak something in there uh, during the, the, the middle period, get in, get out and no one would be the wiser. You would never be able to detect it. So the closer we can bring that those results into real time, the more advantageous it's gonna be for us. Performance is another key factor, is you can't have whatever tool you put into place uh, impact the performance of your system, your users, and your application. Uh, and this often happens when you've got an improperly configured integrity monitoring system. So um, most integrity monitoring systems will, will rely on metadata. And that's, there's very, very little performance impact when you're relying on metadata. But to see within the file contents, you've got to rely on fingerprinting the file or hashing the file. That can be very resource intensive depending on the capabilities of the software the solution you're using. So uh, make sure you evaluate and understand what the capabilities are and how flexible the configuration is um, for your integrity monitoring tool is so you don't grind your system to a halt when you put something like this in place. 
There's a lot of tools out there that lack integration. They'll do integrity monitoring, but they lack integration. You've got to be able to take the results from your integrity monitor and send them to the next target uh, upstream. Maybe this could be a Splunk, this could be an Elk, a Q Radar, some other type of analytics tool. But something somewhere will need to ingest this information to include it in the rest of the enterprise security picture. Oftentimes, I've seen with integrity monitoring tools, there's gaps in the data. It's solutions that don't identify that only identify that a change is made, but then some user with expertise needs to go in there and identify who did it, what happened, when it happened, where it happened, did it affect any policy? Because all you're getting is an alert that something changed. And then you've got to spend a lot of manual effort and time to understand what it really happened. So that can that can include going through log files, going through uh, audit trails, and all types of activity that's just going to delay, 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 and take away time from being spent on uh, investigating more critical uh, incidents. So what did we do? Once we understood all these challenges in Zypro, we said we have an opportunity to here to, to introduce something that's going to provide a ton of value for a critical security uh, component required for compliance and, and risk management. So what we did is introduce Zagi Security One. This is our unified security and risk management solution for nonstop and now beyond. We can extend that to your Windows environments and Linux environments. But uh, the real goal here is to get a single pane of glass view into security on your nonstop systems and applications. Uh, we do that on a, on, on a, as a modular approach, and the next slide will show what the architecture of that looks like. But we deliver uh, functionality in modules. So we've got a file integrity monitor module, which we'll be talking about today. We've got an intelligence and analytics module. module. We've got a threat detection module. Uh, we focus on compliance and risk management. And all of this relies on correlation and context. The key here, here is context. Is we want to present data in an actionable way, meaning I can look at something and I can understand what to do next because the data makes sense. We're not flooding you with a ton of metrics, ton of numbers, and asking you to make sense of it. Uh, we're saying because of our expertise at Cypro, because we've un we understand your system, your environment, your application, your user, these are the things that are important that you need to focus on. And we'll display that information in a summary detailed view. At the highest level, you're going to get big numbers, green, red, good, bad types of uh, results, where you can click on anything on the dashboard, drill further down, further down, and get more and more detail. So at the top level, we're giving you the summary, the executive summary of what's happening. So this tool, uh, this dashboard can be used by chief information security officers or security directors, but it can also be used by operators and analysts who actually have to go in and do the investigative and forensic work. They can click down and drill down and drill down further and further until they get to the raw forensic data that they need for their next step. So where I said Security One is a platform, um, the platform itself is our modernization and a browser enabled platform. And then the modules themselves are licensable not modules. You can license one module or you can license as many modules as you like. Uh, most of our customers, they'll start off with licensing a few modules, uh, the most popular one being the integrity monitoring module, because as we discussed earlier, provides tremendous value right away on a core security fundamental. Uh, so modular architecture, as your security program matures and your comfort level with security one increases, uh, you would just come to us and get an additional license key and turn on additional modules. For the user, nothing to install. Everything's delivered through a modern browser interface. As long as you've got Chrome, you can use Security One. Uh, the server itself will run on Windows, Linux, or in the cloud. Uh, and the key here is the patented technology that provides intelligence, analytics, and context. The more of the modules that you have licensed, the more and more intelligent Security One will be because it has additional data that you can use for intelligence and context. And context is the key here, which we'll talk about towards the end of the presentation. So what does FIM look like, voluntary monitoring look like within Security One? We provide the flexibility to get your data and results in a real time and near real time status. And we'll see Will uh, present that and, and talk about how we can configure that to get some of your most critical data on a near real time basis, whereas your less critical data can be 
uh, more spread out to not impact system performance. Uh, we support Guardian and OSS, critical, because you want to make sure that now more applications are, are being ported to OSS, the openness of the platform, we've got to be able to monitor that side of the house as well. Having allow and deny lists will allow you to uh, address cases where we were talking about before, where some of those alerts might be business as usual, and you might not want to know about them. So you can create allow lists and deny lists and, and have all kinds of different metrics and, and and configurations for that to get very, very specific on what you want to be uh, alerted on and what you don't want to be alerted on. Uh, file hashing and fingerprinting is critical. We support multiple algorithms for this. Uh, policy management, we've got a ton of policies already in there out of the box. So you turn on security one, configure it, you're going to get all of the policies from the HP hardening guide and the flexibility to add more policies or customized policies to fit your environment. It's integrated. It can integrate with your SIM or your SOAR. So the results from your file integrity monitor can be sent to your QRadar or your Splunk or your ELK stack or your analytics tool. Um, we've got multiple customers using, and, and we don't limit the, the tool you can send the data to. We've got multiple customers using all of those tools. So uh, just know the results can go there and they can be consumed. Our file integrity monitor will not just give you the, the Guardian files and the OSS files and that support, but we're, we're down to users and processes and configuration monitoring and uh, SCF and NetBatch and everything you would expect for nonstop plus more. Uh, we've got network port monitoring. We'll be able to tell you if somebody opened up a new port on your system, who that was, what services attached to it, all that stuff right away. Uh, same thing with processes. We'll be able to detect when a new process has been spun up on your system. You'll be able to see what the process is, what the what the application is behind it, what the user, who the user was, all of that. Uh, it will help you prevent configuration drift. We want to make sure that somebody doesn't go in there, start weakening your system, or start changing values on your system, and we're not capturing it. So you'll see all of that. Plus, you'll see all of that within a history life cycle. So you can see every change for every object in a single pane of glass view. Everything's uh, displayed through dashboards, details, and context. Uh, we're, telling, uh, we're alerting on who did what when. Again, you get the entire history life cycle of an object. Uh, and you're gonna see context for changes. And with all this data that we're generating, you're going to be able to do all kinds of new data trending and data analysis. So you can see if certain things are being changed on a, on a routine basis or certain intervals. If you're seeing changes on Saturdays at 2 a.m., for example, when you shouldn't be seeing changes at, on Saturdays at 2 a.m., you can see that through a chart trending chart. Okay, what are the top five use cases we're going to see in a minute? So critical is, is monitoring your guardian files. It's things like your dollar system that system your system n it's critical to to make sure you've got eyes on your audit trails and log files you don't want somebody playing on your system and then going in there and covering their tracks by editing log files or audit trails uh, being able to monitor if somebody drops a suspicious or malicious object on your system you want to know who did it what they did and where that went so being able to uh nonstop really doesn't have uh viruses or malware or ransomware or anything publicly uh, available that, that you can, um, like, like the Windows systems and the Linux system. But this is the closest we're going to be able to get to malware detection and antivirus to know if somebody drops an object on there, we'll be able to identify that. Don't forget OSS. So we're going to see OSS in our demo as well, as well as our safeguard globals and SCF. We don't want somebody going in there and weakening security controls uh, from our system configuration to allow them to do something later on. We can monitor users and groups. So we'll see if a new user was added, if a user was deleted, uh, because that's a very, very common method was once a system is compromised, add a, a, a new user and log in as that new user to cover your trails. And then monitoring your applications. It's not just your system, but you're running these systems because you're running an application that's critical to your business. So monitoring the application itself, monitoring the application data, monitoring the logs from that data. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Will, and we're going to jump into the meat of the product, and he'll walk us through these top five use cases and show us how Security One can help you accomplish uh, these. So Will, over to you. Great. Thank you, Steve. 
Let me just set up my screen here. All right, so thank you, Steve, uh, covering what is important with file integrity monitoring and why you would need that in your organization. Um, I'm going to be showing off in a little demo here the Zygate Security One solution and how that is an answer to a lot of the issues that Steve was talking about. And so I'm going to go through a few different monitors here on the left, and we're just going to take a look at those results and go through a little bit of the functionalities along the way. Of course, Security One is more than just monitors. As Steve mentioned, there's the analytics and intelligence behind our incidents, the appliance sentry module, compliance module. But today we're only going to be focused on that monitors tab. We're just looking at system integrity monitoring. So here is just a all monitors looking at a trend lines on the graph here of what's happening uh, between all of these monitors that I've configured over here on the left. And I have some groups down here below. We're going to swing back to this at the end of the demo, and it'll make a lot more sense once we've picked through a few of these monitors. So let's start off with just an easy one, a Guardian file monitor. Um, pretty easy to understand conceptually. It's my file looked like this before, and now something has changed. Please let me know what has changed. So these alerts below every record here every row is an alert something has changed on the file and i need to know what has changed to that file you see these are all modified alerts something was added or a file was removed you would see that as well now some alerts they're okay they happen because you as a security administrator did something purposefully you know you wrote to a file on purpose and that was okay you can clear those alerts or maybe it was an os upgrade or something else uh, you can always clear alerts out of these records, or maybe it was something that shouldn't have happened, but you went out, rectified the situation, you've reverted the file back to its original state, and now you can clear these alerts. So any one of these, you can go through and say, I no longer want to see these in my results, and I can clear them out of the way. There's also violations. You can see here on this tab, there's an open violations. Um, these are driven directly from the HPE hardening guide a whole bunch of policies that we've built into this solution. So if one of those policies is broken based off of a change that happens on your nonstop, you'll be alerted to it here in the violations tab. So if a system system file, a user file uh, in system system was not owned by super super, you would know about it. You'd be able to double click and see who is the owner, what is violating that policy. And that's the basics behind what an alert is, what a violation is. Um, let's look at another Guardian file example. I'm going to scroll down here to uh, another one that I've created, Zygate configuration files. Here I'm looking at all of our configuration and ACL files for our Zygate security software. Um, and here what I can see, there's a bunch of modifications happening, some adds and some removes of those files. Now, we are a, a development shop. So you'll see a lot more activity up here on these graphs than you would see in a uh, customer environment, in a production customer environment. You wouldn't expect to see as frequent of ACL changes as we do here. Obviously, we're testing things along the way. But let's look at these results here. So again, every time a change happens on a particular file, you'll see an alert that's generated. This particular alert looks like uh, the end of file size changed. Uh, someone wrote to that file, it appears. Um, so let's look at a few different functionalities along the way. So if I go up here to my filtering, um, let's say I want to filter by a particular host. I can just simply come in here and, and start typing. As you can see over here on the left, the host column, it starts highlighting right away as I type. I hit enter, and it's now filtered down to just my quality results. Um, there's additional filtering for each of the different columns in the results here, or you can go to an advanced filter option. From here, I can simply add a combination of filters along the way. I can use different logic like and or logic here to build it how I wish. Um, I can type in exactly what I want to filter by. Let's say I want to filter by a certain 
guardian file name equals and value, or I can use this little targeting icon where I can just go in and select from the results below. Let's say I want to look at this particular uh, dollar systems I get UA, UA ACL file. It just brings it up in that filter automatically. If it's a filter you're going to repeat uh, several times, I would recommend saving that filter so it's easily accessible next time. Um, and if it's a filter that you're going to want to look at very routinely, you can save those in different views. It looks like I've made a view here for just showing all of the ACL files and a view here to look at just one particular nonstop, and you could save any number of views along the way. So looking at these results here, I've filtered down by the node and I've filtered down by the file name. Uh, let's just double click one of these here. We can see, yes, the file was written to because the end of file size change. It's also capturing all of the rest of that Guardian file metadata. Um, the only thing that's changed that made this particular alert be generated was that end of file size. Now we can see here in the results, there's a who column. It's letting me know who made that change. Now at a glance, I can see in my results, we have a security admin ID out there and super, super, they should be allowed to do that stuff. And then there's this joker down here, William, he shouldn't be editing that file. Maybe that's something I need to go and investigate and see what he did. If I look at this who column, we can look at the exact XOS messages that are generated. Now this audit is coming from our object security software, which is optional. Um, you can have security one without it, but the recommendation here is obviously to have XOS in place, not only for the security that it provides, but it's also feeding just that much more information into security one. So now your security profile and all of the information that this product is able to deliver it's just that much more. So that kind of explains the who column and some of the attribute changes down here. Um, let's look at what creating a monitor would look like. So if I go up here to editing this configuration, instead of starting from scratch, look, let's look at one I've already built. Uh, we can adjust which hosts we're looking at, which non-stops. We can select one or two, maybe just the production host, and it looks like here I'm looking at all of them. We can establish different filters. I want to look at, like I said, any ACL file or configuration file in any Zygate subvolume on dollar system and DSMS unit. Now I also have these exclude filters. Maybe there's a file that meets this particular uh, wildcard pattern, uh, but it's not something I want to look at. You know, as Steve was saying, you don't want alert overload on stuff that doesn't matter to you. You want to keep it just what you really want to look at. Um, so I've excluded a couple items here. Uh, there's a task ACL file and a couple of these subvolumes, and I didn't want it to pick it up, so I've excluded them this way. Over here on the right, this is where you establish the frequency in which you want this monitor to collect. Um, I have this one going daily, but you could bring that down to hours. You can bring that down to a matter of minutes. This is where we're getting our monitors into more real time. And that just, it's very depending. It depends on how much you're trying to collect at once. If you have a very big filter, you know, you're collecting multiple files at once, you might want not to push that query, you know, every few minutes, maybe that's an every hour kind of thing. Um, if it's just your critical files and these are the absolute, you need to see what's going on all the time, bring that down into a matter of minutes. If it's something that is just something you need to check in every day or so, you can put that in a matter of days. Um, the hashing here, if you want hashing information included in the results, you can enable or disable that. And then down below, I'm going to go over what the attributes mean and whether they're available or active. Um, let's remove them all. These available attributes are just all of the metadata on a Guardian file. These are the attributes, same attributes you'd see with a FUP info command on the nonstop. Adding these attributes over to active means that you will generate an alert if any one of these attributes change. Now, you might want to just add them all. That might make sense. But you might get alert overload if it's something that would change too often and isn't something you care about. For example, with a Guardian file, you might not want open time to generate an alert every single time the file's opened. Um, so picking and choosing which attributes will actually generate the alert will help reduce the noise in your environment. Taking a look at this policies tab, this is where I was talking about HPE hardening guide. 
um, and more coming down the way, we have all of these set policies where if it is broken on the nonstop, you know, it violates that policy, you will have an alert separately generated for it. Uh, these here are looking at dollar system system user files. I can enable them quickly just by doing that. Now, since these are looking at system system files and that's not what I'm collecting, kind of pointless for me to have the policies on this monitor, but I did have them enabled on that last one we looked at. And that's how it's pretty easy. That's all you got to do to make one of these monitors and you go through and make a whole bunch for the files you care about and the other different object types you care about and start them up. So now we know how to create a monitor. Uh, we've been looking at Guardian files this whole time. Uh, as Steve mentioned, we also look at the OSS space. Let's look at an OSS uh, files monitor results. Here I'm looking at a particular directory, user local, um, and all of the files and subdirectories within that location. And again, it's tracking what's being modified, anything that's being added, anything that's being removed, who's doing it, all of the uh, metadata connected to these files and directories. If you wanted to export these results, um, it's pretty easy. Just go over here, go to export and ship it out with a PDF, CSV, or a worksheet. That's just a one-click, one-stop shop. Now we looked at OSS files. Um, let's take another look at an, an easy example um, that's pretty critical to look at is your safeguard globals. Obviously with safeguard configured and enabled in your environment, you wanna make sure no one's going in and changing those global settings. They can have a drastic impact in your environment. Now you can see at a glance here, I got this you know very boring looking gray line at the top. That's a good thing. That means no one's been messing with the safeguard globals in my environment. That's what I would expect to see at a customer shop. Seeing no results is a good thing. And when you do see results, when you do see all of a sudden it's going to jump up to 17 things were modified on a Saturday, that's a huge red flag. And it lets you know that action needs to be taken in order to remedy that. So here on these globals, again, like all the other monitors, it's capturing all of the information for all the different globals listed here. And it's highlighting what changed. Uh, the password history here on this day changed to zero. And I can click back to the changed attributes, it was six, now it's zero. And the next day, someone changed it from zero back to six. So apparently they were doing some testing. So that's a good example of a, a safeguard globals monitor. Let's go look at a different type. Uh, let's look at our users. I have a few user monitors up here in this group that I can just expand out here. I have an all users monitor, some personal users for all the IDs that I use to log into the nonstop and some privileged users. Now, this is a good example of how you would want to maybe change your frequency. For all users, if I'm collecting all the information for a bunch of users, let's say I just have a lot in my nonstop environments, I may want to only do that on a daily basis. But for your privileged users, users who have the ability to escalate their permissions to super super, users who have the ability to modify files in sensitive areas, that may be a candidate for someone that you want to collect at a more frequent basis. So let's go look at these privileged users. Again, results very similar. We're seeing the usernames, we're seeing their numbers, um, listing when they last logged on, etc. I can click into any of these results and see what changed. Again, these alerts are driven off of what changed. It won't just put results out there if nothing's changed on these IDs. And the user went from thawed to user expired. I can take a look at all the attributes, of course, that are also being collected for that particular user. And again, with violations, we're seeing HPE hardening guide policies and whether or not those have been broken. So this particular user hasn't logged in for 90 days and is not frozen. According to HPE and us, we agree that that user shouldn't be in that state. We should either go out and at least freeze that user or possibly delete that user. So it's a good example of a few different monitor types. Obviously here on the left, there's a bunch more for different objects, uh, you know, different object types, different ways to configure file integrity monitoring. There's users, there's processes, um, et cetera. Um, but now that we're back on this 
monitors tab and I'm looking at all the monitors here, it kind of makes a little more sense. Uh, we see these trend lines here graphed out of what's been added and what's been removed, what's been modified. Drastic spikes are an easy thing to zero in on what was happening that day. Oh yeah, that's the day that we did a bunch of work with our security team, that's probably expected. Or no, that happened on a Sunday, shouldn't have happened at all, let's go investigate what went on. Here below we have groups, alerts, violations that are all grouped together. Um, you can simply add to your groups here and make your own. These are a few that I've made here for today's demo, but it's just a drag and drop. Very easy to see, very easy to visualize what violations are occurring, how many alerts are occurring for each of your different monitors and how you want them grouped. And these cards down here as well are populated on your dashboard. having a bit of a connection issue. <laughs> so hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about how the functionality in Security One works. Um, hopefully that demo gave you a better idea of the different ways you can make monitors and what exactly you'd be getting with Security One as it is now. Um, like I've said, there's more and more being developed into this product, um, more and more is coming out. So keep an eye on that stuff. And I'm going to pass it back over to Steve, who's going to go over you know, a little more information on why monitors are important in your organization. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you, Well, Very informative demo. And I'm hoping we got to uh, demonstrate at least the top five use cases we feel need to be uh, set up in everybody's environment. So. Um, and, but we're only scratching the surface of the capabilities of Security One and file integrity monitoring here. It's a very, very powerful tool, very flexible tool, but uh, can get in there and solve immediate, give you immediate relief for for a challenge like this. So the whole key here is context. We've we've spoken about context a couple of times during our presentation, but really it, it comes down to giving you information in an actionable way. So. Uh, a couple of years ago, as we were developing Security One and how the technology would look like, we identified a, a really innovative and kind of breaking through type of way to apply context to, to data. So what we do is take raw social sources of data from multiple locations, uh, even from sources that aren't typically used for security, uh, and we'll pull all of that together and we'll correlate that. Correlation is something everybody does. Uh, you'll get a lot of vendors that'll pass off their, their correlation and context or intelligence, uh, but correlation is essentially taking two pieces of raw data, finding the commonality in that data, for example, an IP address or an user, and linking those two pieces of, of uh, data, which, can, which are typically events together, and saying, here's a new piece of data from the two original pieces of data. Now, the, the, the disconnect there is now you've got to make sense and understand, is that new piece of information important or is it something I can ignore? And that requires effort because not only have you started with two uh, events, but now you've got a third event to worry about. And then you've got to determine, is that something that you need to spend time investigating and understanding or can you ignore it? So we saw the opportunity to come in and with because of the, the access to the data we have, the new data that we're generating, the new sources of data that aren't typically used for security, uh, we applied a layer of context to that new incident, to that new event. And we can say because of what we know about your systems, your applications, your users, uh, and other things in your environment, we can tell you with um, regular certainty if this new event is something that you actually need to pay attention to or ignore. Uh, and we saw some of that capability during the demo is you know, the intelligence that we bring with your file integrity monitor alerts and, and being able to apply policies from the hardening guide and PCI DSS and, and other sources to highlight the importance of that alert. This really reduces false positives and allows you to focus on the most critical incidents in your environment. So ultimately, we use information to make decisions every day in our lives, from where we're going to eat to what we're going to buy on Amazon to, to I was going to say where we're going to go out over the weekend, but nobody's going out anywhere anymore. So uh, let's scratch that one. But but we've got to be able to use the same type of information to make security decisions. 
And the more information we have, the more accurate our decision is going to become. That's what Security One will help you do. So ultimately, what Security One will introduce is cost savings into your environment. So it's going to reduce the cost of security incidents. Uh, like I mentioned, the earlier you can address that engine light on your car and take it to the mechanic, the more cost effective the repairs are going to be. Security works the same way. The quicker you can identify something in your environment that you need to pay attention to, the activity that's going to the, the activity that you need to take to correct that is going to be much more cost efficient than if you waited later on down the line. Uh, we simplify compliance reporting. It's the intelligence and the automation is within the tool. So we've got, uh, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of use cases in a minute, but we've got some customers that are relying heavily on Security One for their compliance reporting now, where activities that took, you know, weeks and, and months sometimes are down to a matter of days and hours now. Uh, it's going to improve your security staff productivity. We're all doing more with less. Uh, data volumes aren't slowing down. Applications aren't getting any smaller. Uh, as, as systems are being more globalized and more open, the volume, the velocity, and variety of data is just exponentially increasing. And with security staff now being uh, either being held at, at the same amount or even being reduced, we've got to be able to, we've got to figure out how to do more with less. So uh, bringing in a tool to help you improve your staff's productivity by taking away some of the manual effort is really going to help you uh, focus your 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 limited resources or your, your crucial resource resources to areas where they need to help the business. And that's going to help you augment your security staff as well. It's, it, security One and voluntary monitoring and these types of automation tools are not there to replace your staff, they're there to augment them. They're, they're there to remove the, the manual effort um, uh, of, of, of having somebody sit there and go through log files and have to correlate, uh, taking Excel files and having to correlate data back and forth. There's no reason to do that anymore. The, the machines are, are to the point where they've got the intelligence and the understanding and now the context to be able to quickly churn through that data and give you a result rather than having a human do it. This is a use case from Pulse uh, Discover Financial Services uh, that presented, they presented uh, on their usage of Security One back at bootcamp last year, um, talking about the inadequate real-time monitoring they had in their environment, the limited visibility to their nonstop servers and application, and the, and the noise that was generated from all the alerts that they had because the, the solutions they had in place weren't fine-tuned to the nonstop. They didn't have the nonstop context about them, their applications, and their environment to pull out the important things where their staff needs to focus on and, and uh, disregard the things that aren't critical to, to, for their folks to spend time on. So this ultimately got them to faster detection and response of security events so they could see something, they could react to it right away. Uh, dramatic, this was a, a big cost savings for them is, is reducing the time spent and the resources spent in audit and compliance activity. And it was very easy to bring on additional resources to now start managing nonstop. Uh, the tool is not nonstop centric where you're going to require extreme nonstop expertise and, and 20 years of nonstop knowledge to manage it. The goal with the tool with Security One is anybody who can manage security should be able to pick it up and within a, a few sessions understand what it is they're looking at, how they work with it, and then manage security. As the nonstop becomes more open and resources become more and more scarce, we've got to figure out ways to bring in new resources that can manage security and operations on these systems. We put the intelligence, the collective uh, experience of years and years of Vipro um, in, in the nonstop field into the tool. So pop it open, you can see exactly, uh, you're gonna, the interface is going to look very similar, the results are going to look very, very similar to what it would look like in any other security tool. We had a recent success at a very large bank in India as well in implementing file integrity monitoring for their base 24 application data. So they, um, they were spending, again, a lot of manual effort going through and benchmarking and baselining their standards for their applications and their system. Uh, and their resources were limited. Their time was spent on multiple systems and, and applications. So they didn't, have the, the, they didn't have enough resources to allocate to just this activity. So it was dragging on and on. 
And it was, again, too much data. The data being generated from the system as their business started growing was increasing in volume and velocity. So they needed something to come in and take care of all of this and give them a result that then they can act on. We put Security One in there uh, not too long ago, and they saw immediate value to the pain points that they were having. Um, they could get uh, the summary results that they were getting, getting from file integrity monitoring were exactly what they needed to send downstream to their uh, SIM environment. So now the, the security operations team can include nonstop data, Windows data, Linux data, um, Oracle data, SAP data, all in a single interface. And now they know what's happening uh, across their enterprise. It gave them actionable events. They knew now where to focus their energy. If an alert got triggered, they knew who to go talk to, what to do next, rather than scrambling around trying to figure out, is this an alert, is this legitimate, or is this benign? It allowed them to achieve PCI DSS compliance. Uh, we spoke earlier in the presentation, it's very difficult to get to PCI DSS compliance status without change management or file integrity monitoring. This bank was able to achieve that with Security One. Um, simplify their reporting. They were generating tons of different reports in different formats, and you know this auditor wanted it that way, that department wanted it another way, and they were able to centralize all of that into a single uh, format and really help them augment their security staff. And here's a quote from one of their senior directors talking about how Security One enabled them to enforce file integrity monitoring uh, on their Base24 application and made them PCI compliant. So ultimately, uh, Security One's mission is real-time intelligence and analytics. We're your single dashboard for everything nonstop security related. We're monitoring at every layer. Uh, Zypher has been around since 1983. We, uh, we cover the security stack from top to bottom. So at every layer, we've got a solution. Uh, and that layered approach will make sure that if something gets through one layer, the layers underneath it the cat will catch it. It's providing you actionable data to improve response times. The quicker we can get you intelligent information, the quicker you're gonna be able to respond and know how to respond. Uh, anomaly detection is key. It's having visibility into those unknown unknowns uh, that are on your system. Uh, and that's by contextualizing the data, not just correlating, but contextualizing the data to give you something actionable. So that being said, I hope uh, you found the session informative. Uh, again, we're only scratching the surface of what Security One file integrity monitoring can do. If you want to find out more, please reach out to your account exec, reach out through us, uh, reach out to us through our website. We'd be more than happy to give a customized demo or take this conversation even further. Uh, so with that, I appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you so much and looking forward to the next one. Thank you, everybody.